So winner of that plays Razo. That's going to be a good match. Uh, Glug beating Master Mario in winners. Yeah. So yet again, a lot of upsets, no, but a lot of good matches. Master Mario actually, like, him or Zenyu was, is actually, like, projected to get top. They're not projected in, in terms of Smash.gg, but if you look at the data for both players from the skill, right. it's either going to be Zenyu or Master Mario sitting in top four alongside Razo and T3 Dom. Right. And, of course, Elegant. Those four will be really interchangeable. Yeah as the day goes. And of course, Zenyu, if you guys did not miss it, or if you guys have missed it, uh, Zenyu did win the last MSM of the decade. Decade, decade yeah. yeah. The year, yeah. the decade. Yeah. Call it what you want, man. I mean, Zenyu's just one of those players who doesn't show up to a whole lot of tournaments. But when, when he, he does, does yeah. yeah. He makes a big name for himself, for sure. Oh, he yeah. lets everybody know, you know, my name is still on the board for right. a reason. Like, I may be at PR spot number 15, but I could be higher if I wanted to be. Exactly. I mean, it's a distance he's got to travel. He lives out there in the valley of SoCal. Oh, yeah. Quite quite a big trek. It could be anywhere from an hour to two hours. But anyways, he made the travel all the way here to Top 32 to fight Kanan S. Bruce, a classic. A rival has gone throughout Test of the Time. Of course, K9, honestly, still making a PR, even though he voted to, hey, man, I don't ever want to be PR. But you know what, yeah. son? He made it out here for a reason. Yeah. But here we go. I mean, you know what? K9, a very, very strong player. And we're seeing it why, why right now, you know? just going up with so much defensive play and just keeping Zenyu walled out. Yeah, as, as would be his game plan too. He wants to make sure that if Zenyu does get in, it is going to be through trial and tribulation. Good understanding of, you know what, I gotta go for the direction, usual the spot dodge and then go for a down tilt. He doesn't want to let Zenyu get a grab because he knows what it means for him. Right. Uh, a little, I, I feel like that was too much commitment here. The back air would have been fine, then back off and then try to whip punch Zenyu for it. But the biggest problem is he really committed to up smash, trying to sense out Zenyu might have been going for the aerial. All right. And you know what? He ate a good, like, 40% off of that one combo. Yeah. Which Zenyu means pretty much big bucks here. 81%, you get Wolf off the stage. Right. right. You understand the game plan on the recovery, and it's Curtains on the first stock. And yet again, all he needs is that one solid hit to just throw him off stage, and then Zenyu can just go off for the edge guard. Yeah, I like the empty hop, but unfortunately being stuck in the shield stand up gives Zenyu the opportunity to go for a grab. K9 inches his way back in the stage. I like that. Kind of moves away to towards center stage because he knows what it means. Up smash to punish Zenyu's up smash. I mean, yet again, both characters love to use up smash as a really, really strong punish tool. Yeah. But you got to be careful about hitting it on shield because both characters can kind of punish it with their with their up smash, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like a who does it first kind of option. Back right. air to put him off the stage. Not really quite yet. Good for Kanan to get the tech here. He doesn't want to get caught in an opportunity where he doesn't go for a tech, and then Zinni can capitalize off of it. And yet again, now that we see K9 with the lead, you know, he's definitely playing it a little bit more safe, a uh, little bit more patient. You know, I feel like that's where K9 really excels at, is when he really respects his opponent and be like, okay, I'm going to respect you. I'm going to just outpatient you. I'm just going to slowly blow you down when I have the lead. Exactly. And when you want to talk about the lead here, Kanan at 164 to 80, still surviving. This means a lot against Zenyu. able to come back on the stage here, take the edge guard position, and then try to read Zenyu on the come up. Nice drop down there, and he's able to recover, but K9 and Zenyu fight it out for the ledge. All right. That was a really good recovery from both players' parts. Now, realizing, hey, I saw my tools, and staying calm underneath that uh, high intensity pressure right there. Yeah. I really got a opportunity for Zenyu because he was trying to fake out an option where he could go for uh, either falling up air or back air, and that's what K9 was accounting for. Didn't account for the down air. That landing there just going to save uh, K9 from getting juggled more. Yeah. At this point, with K9 up at two stocks against one, this is K9's game to lose here. If Zenyu gets any momentum with a grab, any opportunity like so to put him off the stage in a situation like that, it'll be K9's game to lose here, right. as I mentioned earlier. 0-0, zero, zero, one to one Yet again, that's just one of Mario's like really deadly combos that you almost never want to DI in just because yeah. like if you DI in, then you just get hit by the fair, and if you're like if you DI out, then you get hit by the barrel. Yeah, the, the percent almost feels like a, an opportunity you don't want to get hit by. And again, K9 just trying to do everything he can to keep this lead, but Zenyu opening him up right now. Not going to be able to extend it any further, but still really good damage, you know, taking the momentum of the match so far. Yeah, K9 is struggling to come back onto the stage here. He has to pick out his options carefully. Finally lands in, gets the grab, puts Ken Zenyu on the other side of the stage here, but Zenyu still fights back. Right. For Kanan, he kind of has to watch out his landing, and I like that so far he lands, walks a little bit away here. He doesn't want to hold shield, doesn't want to commit to an option. Just wants to make sure he's come back to the stage. Like, like he's trying to keep Zenyu at bay with the blaster. He knows Zenyu might want to approach with the fireball and play. All right. 
I feel like K9 is just looking for that one roll, that one misspaced aerial in order to just hit that smash attack. But, you know, Zenyu not really feeding it to him. And, you know, now he's off stage and on the ledge. And this is bad for K9 right now. Close. Gets a forward smash. Zenyu at the ledge. K9, I like that. Reads the fact that he might have been looking at the platform to land here. And he sees that he made the same mistake twice. You don't want to land towards center stage. You want to go towards the ledge. K9 with the first game. I know, I like what K9 did right there. He used up tilt instead of up smash, you know? Yeah. If up smash had whiff, you know Zenyu was going to punish it with a grab or something yeah. hard. But you know what? He realized, okay, I'm going to follow underneath you, watch where you're trying to land, and right when you're above me, I'm going to throw out up tilt. If it whiffs, then I'm not going to get punished super hard for it. Yeah. But if it hits, I'm going to get the game. It's commendable, too, for Zenyu to try to land on stage. He tried to use the platform. K9 had to punish, try to land towards the stage. K9 still had to punish your game, too. We'll see how Zenyu adjusts to that, especially trying to land around K9, but also at the ledge game. It feels like K9 had a majority of the win at the ledge game, despite the fact that Zenyu had such an explosive opportunity to take care of K9 and put him on even stocks. All right. Here we go, another bear just to open up K9, but not going to be able to send off of it, but he will off of this combo. Unfortunately, K9 was able to super hard DI in to avoid any extension from Mario, who was looking for the DI out at that point. Yeah, down throw, gets a dash attack here. Another opportunity to follow up, but unfortunately, Zenyu was going to go for the tech. Miss grab. Kind of finds the opportunity, scoops this man up 86%, takes him to the other side of the stage, but K9 knows I want to fight back with the neutral air. I like what Zenyu's doing. He's going for the guaranteed up airs, and then he's just waiting to see how K9 reacts and disadvantage yeah. right there. So if you were cheating, saying like, okay, I'm gonna fall underneath you, and I'm just gonna try and fish for an up air when it's safer. No. So oh, close. Cool. Nice. Each player trading up forward. A smash attack in general. Yeah. Back air. He's off the stage here. Unfortunately, the DI. I felt like the way that Kano was trying to set up for the wolf flash to try to come back. Right. Wasn't gonna be enough for him. Yeah. I feel like it took away his double jump too. Yeah. Close. Doesn't even read the two frame. Yet again, I like that using the up smash to kind of put him in a disadvantage situation, but not going to be able to follow up on the, the follow up right there. Nice. Looking for the opportunity to read the jump get up. Ooh, why? Zenyu reading that down smash, going for a fair, getting a hard punish off of it. And now Zenyu is sitting comfortably with the lead, and he's just going to try to extend it as far as he can. And K9 really has to find his kill soon. Yeah, it's really difficult for Kanan to understand, okay, this time I have to make a couple more of the approaches here. Gets the back throw. Really good opportunity for Kanan to finally get an edge guard situation here. All right, sending it out. Nice. Reads the opportunity and the spacing to finally seal the sock against Zenyu. Right. But, I mean, Zenyu was such a lead at 106 here. That stock was going to look like uh, one of more of a given one. All right. There we go. Fair and just continuing juggling with the up airs. We know what the nair is going to break out of that. You know, I like how both characters have that, like, sex tet, like, sex kick snare. Yeah. That just, like, they throw it out, it's a long-lasting hitbox, it comes out relatively fast, and it trades with a lot of moves that both characters want to throw out in order to juggle. Yeah, having a long hitbox with Nair as both Mario and Wolf, though, do, especially offstage, can definitely do a lot of dividends. Of course, K9 obviously going to opt to DI out, come back to the ledge, but you got to watch out, the invincibility has run out, down to the Nair. You mentioned how it's really good, and that shows for a good reason here from Zenyu. Go using the platform to extend the combo, but oh, there's the up air. Falling up air and yeah. another opportunity to scoop Zenyu. I'm sorry, K9 to the other side of the stage. Zenyu won't even let K9 play the game. Right. And yet again, all these falling up airs is just catching K9 off guard, you know? Yeah. Or tilt, nice. K9 strikes back here. One stock to take away. Hopefully, they at least put it in even stocks. Here we go. Back air, not going to be able to quite find it. But there's a dash tag. There's a double jump. And I like what he did there. He used the. He used a reflector to avoid getting flooded and being yeah. put in a horrible position, but unfortunately just held it just a fraction of a second too long and wasn't able to up the in time. Yeah, and you know what that meant too. I don't want to get flooded. My recovery, honestly, it's not that far. Not a really good game plan. We'll flash, we'll fire. Don't have that much of a reach. Right. If I get flooded without my jump here, I'm pretty much without a paddle. Right. And game three we go. I wonder if we're going to see K9 going a uh, different stage with the counter pick. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, for K9, he did a lot here game one. Daniel had the download on game two here. And of course, one of the things that Mario does have in this meta game is platforms to play with. Right. And that's definitely helpful way more towards Mario. I mean, the character realistically only has one bad stage with the final destination. All right. And you know, if it comes down to like FD or like town, you know, like 
Town at least has like platforms for Mario to continue up airing string on. Yeah. So the bands are usually, you know, FD Kalos. Right. Right. And so this is kind of like the Town and City. It would be the middleman because it does lose the platforms at one point in the transformation. Yeah. Like so. Yeah. So every 30 seconds, like you see, we get FD for about a good like 15, 30 seconds. Nice. Four tilt sees the cross up here. Can I try to capitalize? Nice. Looking for the whip punish on. Zenyu. He knows Zenyu wants to come in with an aerial. He knows what last happened last game, falling up airs. And again, all these up airs keeping Mario up above them. But you know what, Mario, good aerial mobility will be able to just kind of drift all the way to the other side of the stage to avoid any continuing jungle. Nice. Can I wait to the platform, looking to see how Zenyu's going to recover? He might want to drop down and go for a back air or an air. Right, there's a dash attack, looking for the edge guard, not going to go and commit to anything. You know, I feel like that's one of the interesting things when you look at different players' play styles is that. Like K9, he'll threaten out the edge guard, but he won't actually commit to it. Yeah. Whereas the player like Charlie will be like, "Oh, I'm gonna go as deep as I can to get this nair to kill you." Exactly. He knows what he knows what level you can't come back from the nair. Okay. Two back airs. Can I force to go to the ledge? Up smash to try to read out an option, especially from Zenyu. Right. And you see the DI out to avoid the up air string into the bear. I can definitely tell you right now, K9 is a little bit flustered here. He sees blood in the water, but he's not able to capitalize. If I were Kane, I'm looking to find more whiff punishes is the better answer, but unfortunately he got scooped up trying to go for a forward smash. Too much commitment there. At that point, I would have loved to have seen what Kane had got sensing Zenyu's area. All right. And yet again, throwing out a lot of these smash attacks. You know, I feel like, like you said, he's just really fishing for this kill and it's not working out for him. And the more he tries to push the, the kill option, the more he's getting punished for it. Yeah. He's a little bit of tunnel vision, I would say. Yeah. Grab shield stand up, but I like it. Neither wants to commit because they know what the auto shield game is. And definitely, Zenyu knows what K9's auto shield game is. And again, there's the opening. Yet again, I like what Zenyu did right there. He knew that K9 was going to land within there, so he just stayed on the ground and waited for him to come to him. Better to come back to the to the ledge here and then find another opportunity. You get ledge invincibility. That's the much better trade-off than getting comboed. Still an opportunity to tech here from K9. But a oh. missed wolf flashed is what's going to be all she wrote there in that last game. Yeah. I think they're expecting it to be best three out of five. but No, this is uh, it's best two out of three. Yeah, best of three here. Yeah. Champ did make an announcement before Top 32 started that the only thing that would be best three out of five is Top 16. Yeah. Winners, for those of you guys wondering back at yeah. home, winner semis are only best of five. Yeah. Usually it's best of five for winner semis for yeah. locals, but this is a larger event, so I think K9 had that best three out of five mindset. And yeah. No, that's why you felt like he was going for that riskier option because, like, you know what? 